What's going on Dolphins fans? It's Connor from the Dolphins Dive. In today's video, we're gonna be going over how the Dolphins can clear cap space. Currently, the Dolphins sit at negative 16 million in cap space and by the beginning of the new league year, must get uh, out of the negative. So in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down how they do that. But before I jump into that, can you please just like and subscribe to this video? It helps the channel grow and it means a lot to me immensely. Uh, and as well, if you're interested in cool Dolphins merch, check out the dolphinsdive.com. It's my own merch shop I set up about a couple months ago, and I appreciate if you just gave it a look and maybe you're interested in any of the merch. But without further ado, I'm gonna hop right into today's video. So there's three key things the Dolphins can do to clear cap space. It's obviously cutting players, trading players, and restructuring contracts. So in today's video, the Dolphins are kind of pigeonholed because of how they negotiated their contracts, but it's smart also how they did it. So I'm going to start with the cuts. There's only three really smart cuts the Dolphins can make. Um, and there's two different kinds of cuts. There's a regular cut, which the cap um, cap space that's freed takes place immediately. And then there's a different kind of cut, which is called a post June 1st cut, which means you make the cut whenever, but you don't get the cap relief until after june 1st so for example the the first person most people are going to want the dolphins to cut is byron jones but when we cut him we don't get that cap space back immediately we wait until june 1st and then we'll get 13.6 million in cap space back so the only uh, other post june 1st cut the dolphins makes eric fisher which would save 1.5 mil so cut eric fisher and byron jones post june 1st and you'll save approximately 15.1 mil and then the only other really obvious cut the Dolphins can make is to cut Stephen Carter and you'll save $2.3 million. You can obviously cut some lower end players, but most of the time you want to keep those guys as camp bodies and have them fight for roster spots and maybe they'll blossom and that's good. Otherwise, they get cut and you get the money anyway, but you, you need depth on your team, especially heading into a long training camp. So those are really the only obvious cuts. Um, in terms of trades, there are top trade candidates the Dolphins can make, but when you're dealing with trading someone who's getting paid heavily, it usually doesn't fare well for you. For example, Cedric Wilson's getting paid $8 million. That's too much money for a guy that's not um, going to be a key contributor. Um, Dolphins thought he would be our third receiver, but Trent Sherfield had a phenomenal year. Ray Craigcraft played great. Um, so you don't necessarily need to be spending $8 million on a guy who mainly just returned punts. So, yeah, are you... Would it be ideal for the cap for able to trade him? Yes, but you'd have to probably package a good pick to move him. Uh, will the Dolphins be willing to do that? I don't know, especially with our limited draft capital. But that's an instance where the trade would make sense. Um, I don't think there's any other really key trade can key trade candidates aside from maybe if you're able to find a taker for Byron Jones, who I doubt, or maybe Emmanuel Ogba because his cap number is big. Although the Dolphins can get out of his deal after next year and. Emmanuel Ogba is a guy that you could technically restructure his contract to save money this year, but that means you're more you're liable for his money next year as well. And that's a guy where you'd rather get the money out of the way so that next year you can make that decision if you want to move on, basically without any negative cap, or if you want to keep him and you can kind of figure that out next time. But you don't want to force money into the future for a guy that you might want to move on from uh, in the, the recent future. So... Aside from Cedric Wilson, the only obvious people that can potentially be traded are that, that that's literally it. Everyone else that's getting paid pretty pricey is going to be too hard to move unless maybe if Jerome Baker doesn't fit this scheme change, that's the only other potential guy you maybe want to trade. But aside from Cedric Wilson, there's no obvious trade candidate, but maybe comment down below if you guys disagree with that. So that's the cut part out of the way and the trade part out of the way. That's obviously some of the obvious ways you can save money but the last but not least way and you see it more and more every year uh in the league is restructuring contracts so if you're obviously a novice into how the cap space works i know i was at one point and over the years you learn to figure out what it all means but basically cap numbers are just a way to account for the the amount people are getting paid but it's not real money it's all accounting so when players get a signing bonus when they sign contracts that money is spread out throughout the entire contract so um you could pay somebody 20 million right now but it would be spread out over five years so it's not all in one year so the dolphins have three big players on very large contracts that are having big cap numbers but if they convert 
their salary into a signing bonus, it gets spread out throughout the contract so the Dolphins are able to save money. So for example, one of the guys the Dolphins can restructure and that's maybe someone that they don't want to because there's liability in the future because it, it's Tron Armstead. So if you restructure Tron Armstead, who's obviously a cornerstone player for us because he's very good, but if you restructure him, you turn his base salary into like a million dollars, but it spreads his remaining salary over the next four years of his contract. And Tron Armstead's an injury prone guy who <clears throat> obviously he's a dog and a very good player, but say he suffers a serious injury and then he's out and then he doesn't bounce back well, you know what I mean? Then you're paying top dollar and you can't move on from it. Despite the fact that you basically, you sacrifice his potential future uh, in terms of money. So it's, that's more of a risky guy. There's some more obvious guys where you can do that with, but I think they'll still probably likely restructure Tron Armstead. Um, if they there's a max restructure where you turn his base salary to literally one million, and that's a little more risky because, I, like I said, on the back end of that, if he doesn't play up to par, you cannot move on from him. You're stuck with that money. Um, so it's Toronto Armstead's more of a risk just due to his injuries, but at max, which I don't think they will do the max restructuring, which means they'll turn his salary into one million and then turn the, the rest into a signing bonus that gets spread out. I think they'll probably do a little middle ground where they'll save a decent bit of cap, but not as much as what I'm about to say. But at max, they can save $13 million from Toronto Armstead. Uh, the next guy is Bradley Chubb. He's more of a guy that you can save the maximum amount of, amount of money because he's a young guy who you know where you're getting with. He's obviously has injuries in the past, but He's still 27 years old. He's got. He's probably going to play his entire contract for the Dolphins, unless obviously there's a steep decline in his pay. But at max, the Dolphins can sign uh, save 14 million if they convert his base salary into a signing bonus. And last but not least, the only guy, other guy that makes sense for a big restructure, because like I said, you can restructure every contract, but then that means you're more liable for them in the future. And with how, for example, if you. Um, Next guys obviously Tyree Kill. If you at max we can save 19 million, but as I was explaining, say if we restructure all three of those guys, that means next year their cap hits bigger, and then you have to pay somebody. Like next year you're gonna have to pay Tua. Um, obviously none of the other first round picks really panned out too well, but then it gets hairy. So you don't want to continue to restructure because then you want to you're gonna paying someone big money, but then you have to sign somebody and things like that. So. You can't just restructure. There's always risk to it, but it's a way for the Dolphins to get uh, some cap relief and then be able to sign some players as well. And obviously, the Dolphins are in that window where they're in a win now uh, mode. So they are going to be risking the future in order to win now. And I understand that. That you have to understand that the that's how the league is. It's windows. We did the rebuild in 2019, cleaned up the cap, got a bunch of draft capital. Now it's time to pay for guys and extend guys. Um, but like I, I said, it comes with the risk. So, um, and as well as free agent contracts as well, we're not going to have the most cap space in the league. But since we're in that window, we can sign a guy to, for example, I don't know who's the top. Tony Pollard's a, a guy that a lot of Dolphins fans want. Me, I don't personally want him. But say the Dolphins want to sign him to a five-year, $50 million deal. If he'd probably get more than that. But we can make his cap hit not $10 million because... We can give him a big signing bonus, which means we can pay him like a, a $1 million salary, um, but then give him the signing bonus throughout those five years. So it would probably be a $6 million cap pit as opposed to 10 or more. So the way we structure free agent contracts can also um, be able to utilize our cap to the most advantageous point possible because the, the cap number is deceiving, but it is real. Um, and if, for example, this doesn't pan out for the Dolphins and we stink, Next year, we're going to be in a shit situation because we're going to be so backed up in our cap space. That's going to be tough to get out from under. But the Dolphins are in a good spot. Um, I'm interested to see what they do with that cap space. But um, my future videos are going to be going over how I think they should spend some of that cap space in terms of re-signing guys and then potential free agent targets. But that's going to be it for today's video. I appreciate anybody for watching. It means a lot to me. Uh, and until next time, I'll catch y'all.